Um, okay, well, it says live, so we'll see what happens. Oh, wait, hold on one second. Let me just, uh, yeah. All right, great. Well, let me get, let me go over there so I can see what's happening in chat. Oh, man, that was uh, a little sweat last night. No, absolutely. Let me see what's chat. Chat is ready to play messages. Okay, let's see. Okay. I'm trying to jump in, but my computer's moving a little slow. I think it uh, happens when I do the live stream sometimes. Um, wow, still waiting on information on the NBA, huh? So much to know. Yeah, no, it's fine. I, there's a couple of guys I actually wanted to make sure to uh, to go over with you also. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have your screen up, but I don't know if you've tried it yet. Yeah, it's supposed to, Oh, there it is. Wait. There there's it is. a couple of guys I actually wanted to. You know what? I'm going to change the name. Do you mind if I change the name of this here to, to NBA show or something like that? Yeah, whatever. I don't even know there was a name on it. That says NBA lineup, MLB lineup show. Oh, okay. Oh, that's weird. Well, let me edit it. Well, because we, I'm I'm on it. Oh, you mean on YouTube? Yeah. Well, you should be able to do that. Uh, yeah, it's not letting me. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's it's really hiccuping for me over here, but I think it's because I haven't. Uh, I think it's because the stream is just slowing it down a little bit. But this is it. Usually, slow, goes a little faster on mine. How did you end up last night? I did good. Um, yeah. So I, I did. I did really nicely on. Uh, well, first baseball wise. I, I, I completely locked in McCullers on FanDuel at 13% ownership um, in literally every lineup, and he smashed. So I was able to uh, – so I spread out enough where – I actually had a couple of slaps at um, – because um, I did end up – Jules, I ended up with um, – uh, I, I did well. I made, I think, like three times my money on FanDuel. Oh, and then cool. on um, and baseball, I broke even. And then basketball, I did well. I, you know what? I made like two times my money. And it was so fun. I really – I almost gave up, dude. I mean, like when eight was ruled out, I, did, I didn't see it. So I had like 50% of my lineups dead, okay? And then the, the – the, and Giannis and all this, I literally almost gave up. I'm like, you know, I'm not going to make any change. That's it. I'm just eating it. You know, I'm just going to lose all my money today. And then I'm like, you know what? Let me just kind of look. And then – and then I found out, and then it was funny, I had Serge Ibaka locked in the fan duel, right? And then like, when they gave the news that Serge was out, the first thing I was going to say, you know, just screw it. I'm not even going to – I'm just going to just lose all my money. And then I thought of what we talked about online when I was, when I was suggesting to maybe use uh, Boucher. And you said, you said, well, maybe if, like, everybody's out, including Serge, then maybe you could use him. And so I totally went with some lineups with him and oh, Bobo together. On on DraftKings, so that ended up doing okay. That that was including like I cash some eight lineups. I you know I cash some. Um, uh, uh, well, you did well with the Middleton lineup also. I, I saw that. But you just well, never I, do I, it, I man. The truth is, I actually had about twenty percent Middleton. I just left him in the big buy-in one that I had. I I, I I avoided him. I played either Michael Porter Jr. or Siakam in pretty much all my other lineups. Um, which would have been frustrating too for Michael Porter Jr. who had like twenty in the first quarter and then ended up with 23. Um, I had that one in the $15, which had a chance to win the whole thing. But yeah, man, it was a great night. It was a nice tie. It was, it was kind of a little, I was, I was really hoping that 80, 80 got there with a minute left. Um, and that's that leapfrog Brandon Adams and one other guy passed me who had AD and LeBron. Um, but yeah, it was a great night. I saw there was a little troll there. It was, I, I and so it wasn't a troll, but I saw when you – again, I, I kind of, like, lost track of everything. My phone kind of went dead. Mm -hmm. And um, – Yeah, it was a great night. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh, I do see us – I do see it working, by the way, at least on my Twitch channel. So at least – Yeah, I think whatever. it is. I, I probably could make the um, the screen a no little worries. different. But I'm just using this. So so, so then I – when my phone activated, I saw your messages. And I saw your Twitch when you're like – Oh, Brendan, great job winning. Uh, great job as usual. This is, I'm sure I can beat you with my one lineup or something like that. That's like, that's I didn't say it like that. No, no, no. I'll no, leave it right I, here. I, I was 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 back <laughs> correct, maybe. Ha uh, for real good game, Brandon Adams. I'll take it for, for my only entry. Nice win for it at State Kings. That was a pretty, uh, pretty know, nice. My only it entry, I like <laughs> It wasn't mean or anything weird or anything like no, that. No, it wasn't mean. I don't, I don't think he cares anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh. I just do like to point out sometimes that you can do things with one lineup and you can do it without being too crazy. I'm not like you had to be chalky some like most 
lead the whole way yesterday to make money. You know what I mean? You couldn't have had, there weren't that many off the board plays. Although what was, I'm sure your guy was, uh, what was Boucher ended up owning? Although it would have been weird to try and fit him in by that point. Yeah, I, I'm weird? Mad. What, did, um, what, did, what was his, uh, what was the deal with him? Like nothing. Really? Nothing yeah. at all? Yeah. I, I thought Norman Powell would have a, like, I, I, he was right about where I thought he'd be in the big one, but then I, th- I bet he was less than 10% on the other one. Didn't, didn't, didn't Brandon Adams have him in the tur- in the 777 Boucher or no? Somebody was, cl- or- he might have had him. I don't know. It didn't, whatever it was, it didn't matter. I had all the guys. As right. long as if, if, if I played Siakam, I still win the tournament over Middleton. But for, but for those people that might be listening, if anybody's out there, I mean, like, oh, I, here. I, I presume think- it's recording, whatever it is. But, um, yeah. um, you know, it goes to what I said for like the first 10 minutes I spent yesterday is that, you know, we waited for, you know, we, we complained there was no NBA for three months. And, you know, when NBA comes back, you're not allowed to complain when there's all this kind of volatility. Um, and you just have to, and it rewards people and stick by to make volatility. Um, and you just have to, and I think, I think rewards people where my and stick by. I don't know why I'm myself. Sorry, that was a mistake. I, it, it was uh, I was trying to tweet this out to, to some people, but uh, yeah, it's oh, okay. now. Um, and so, and, and again, and it's, it, you have you have to be on top of, uh, and it's the combination. Number one, being the NBA in general. Number two, just extra volatility with with. Uh, look, we've we've had we've had we've had we've had players ruled out for all kinds of reasons, right? We've had we've had we've had games canceled because of sprinklers going off, right? In the in the arenas. Right. And now, like, you know, we, a guy's getting benched because he missed his COVID test. <laughs> and they released that with, like, four minutes to, to, to lock in that game or something like that. that. And I, I literally missed it, you know. And, and um, But, you know, th- that's what you got to do. I mean, if you're going to play the NBA, that's what you got to do. If you, don't, if you don't like that, then play, you know, play baseball. I mean, I mean, play baseball anyway, but baseball's a little less volatile when it comes to that kind of stuff. Unless you have, like, Clevenger or Plutko, who uh, who got carted off of the facilities because they missed their COVID test or, or they did something? Wait, did that just happen? Oh yeah, yesterday both Clevenger and Plutko were like escorted oh. off for the team, pretty much. Oh, they, both, they, 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 both violated, COVID, they both violated COVID policies, and so they they ordered car service for them and sent them home and didn't let them travel with the team for the rest of the of the, of the trip or something like that. Yeah. Um, that's that's funny. I, I didn't. Well, I well, Pluko's pitching tonight, so I, I have him in my lineup. So I kind of a little bit weird about that. So that's why I was asking. Um, uh, a couple quick questions we got in chat real quick about today. Uh, how do we feel about Nets value versus Pell or Pell's guys? We really have to wait to see exactly who's in and, and who's not. But I do think that I would feel I would tend to feel better about the Pelicans uh, off the bat. I don't find myself particularly drawn to the Nets. We've seen this story before. We saw it where nobody actually exceeded value once. Now that'll probably not happen tonight, but there's just plenty of other places. So I'm not excited about the Nets value at this moment. I may change my mind a little bit later. How about you? Yeah. So you want to talk about the slate in general? I mean, cause, cause this is, this is, this is where I'm struggling. Okay. So let's talk about drafting. This is FanDuel. Actually, we have like four hours. I, I totally, I was about to like get all paranoid that I wasn't going to get my FanDuel stuff in after this. I got forever for FanDuel. Um, but for drafting, here's here's my issues. There's like a, a couple of guys that I really, really don't want to not play. Okay, um, I really want to either lock guys in or they're real like solid priorities and can't get everybody in. You know what I mean? So, so the guys that I'm really, I, you know, chalk or not, I, I don't want to fade Wessel Westbrook in this spot. Okay, I really want to get him in. I don't care what his ownership is. I just it's just way too easy of a spot for him to smash without any effort. You know what I mean? So, so I really want to get him in. The other guy I really want to get in, and this this could be kind of dangerous, whatever. But I think I want to get Bogdan in every lineup too. I mean, he's kind of ridiculous um, yeah. at that price, um, considering you know all the guys that are going to be out there. With Fox being out there, the 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 other guy that I really want to get in is is Vooch at center. Okay, um, so so here's the problem. Then I would love to play Lillard. Okay. And I would love to play Luca. I can't get everything, right? And I would love to get like a lowered Luca lineup in for obvious reasons, right? I mean, you want to get that in. I don't know how I can do it without um, 
without not yeah. using now, – now, the issue I have is is actually not being able to play Vooch. You know what I mean? So, so because there's no center. Why is that an issue? It, well, what do you mean? Why is this – why do I need to play Vooch, you mean? I just free built like, 50 lineups. I don't have him in one of them. Oh, okay. But I'm actually worried about that. So, well, who are you using at center then? Uh, center doesn't. I don't. I'm not a strong fan of center on Fanduel. Um, no, no, no. I'm not talking about Fanduel. Talking about draft. Who are you using? Who are you using there? A combination of cheap guys who I'm waiting to get the late starting information on. Basically. Right. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. So, so. Yeah. You know, but DeAndre, not- the answer is the real answer is DeAndre Ayton and Christoph Porzingis are the better plays. No, no, that's fine. But but so if you use them with the same price, how do you, how do you get Luca and and Lillard in? You could play one of the low guys, like you have to play a Melly, or uh, you can start in the first game, which I don't want to do with Gary Clark. Um, you could play Podol, who's a little bit cheaper. And honestly, you know what's going to be really, really weird today? Really weird, and it's not going to happen, but I'm just going to say it's possible it could happen. We might see Boban times two right today. Do you yeah, I, I, I'm not a uh... – I wasn't. I wasn't planning on that. Um, Forty-eight minutes of, of of play, where you have uh, one seven footer, and probably another twenty-four minutes where there's two seven footers you're playing against. So Boban being on the court is it, like even with Kristaps back, they might do it, man. It's. I'm not saying it's a great play. It's a long shot tournament play, but I'm going to take that shot potentially today. And um, you know, as we wait to see, you never know. He might even make the starting lineup. It's really possible. Um, you know, let, let, let me let me address some of these. So some of these are really really good questions that were um, that were uh, that that kind of address some of the things I want to talk about this late anyway. So uh, McMack or Mac McSee saying, um, "Is Corey Joseph a good play on DraftKings?" I I, I think so. Um, I, I think that uh, considering the other stuff that you want to do that I want to do, for example, like with Westbrook and Lillard and or Luca or whatever, that it's a really really good piece of value. Now, I will tell you that he has, you know, provided, uh, let's just say, um, uh, varying degrees of success in this spot before. You know, last year, there were several times where he was about this price and was incredibly high owned. Not that he's going to be as high owned this time, but, and and one time he did really well. Another time he just, I don't want to disappear. He played minutes, just didn't do anything, you know? So uh, I, I do think he's a good play, especially in the context of the slate. Um, but but uh, he's certainly he's certainly no lock. But uh, but I am definitely gonna. I know I end up using him a ton. I just I just have a feeling I'm gonna end up doing that. Yeah, I I, I think that he's gonna be so initially seemingly popular that there's plenty of guys you can pivot to in the last game. So if you find that your lineup's chalky or that you need to try and take a shot at some maybe some some real ceiling type performances. You can switch to to we'll see who's starting. They might not. They might end up being chalky too. But whether it be Frank Mason or Nikhil Alexander Walker, that would be the pivot you would make from Corey Joseph. I have Corey Joseph in a number of lineups, and I don't feel good about it. I don't feel like this is the kind of slate where we should be using this kind of value. It is a lot of minutes. Um, it's not a guy who we ever see produce hardly anything in these spots. We've seen the story over and over again, so it's a little bit worrisome to me. Um, but hey, if you don't if you don't mind, can I can I give you another pivot? Yeah, go ahead. Somebody I wanted to talk to you about. Um, what do you think? And again, we, I, again, it, 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 he could end up getting twelve minutes. He could probably end up getting thirty. Um, what do you think at a similar price coming out of that net game that um, that uh, Jeremiah Martin? Jeremiah Martin. Um, Did you look at him at all? Why, like, this is no reason at all. I can't get into the nets for some reason. Uh, (laughs) yeah, I hear you, but I mean, if we're, I mean, again, we're we're talking about Corey Joseph at 3,700 or whatever, gonna be popular. And you did mention that Brooklyn does certainly have like all kinds of variance with what they could do. And if you know, people they throw him out there for 25, 30 minutes, which certainly is in the realm of possibility. Um, I don't know. I mean, again, I haven't really heard too much talk about it, which kind of helps a little bit. Um, so just, again, I, it, it's a war out there. I was just wondering. Point guards are so powerful on DraftKings today. It's so hard for me to use a spot. That's why I'm having struggling with Joseph, too. Yeah. I, I don't want to play those guys. I'd rather, That's why TLC is going to be really popular. 
uh, Luago Cabarro. Uh, and I actually, he's a guy I'm actually going to try and put in a couple lineups real quick because I have plenty of other different value that I like, but I want some exposure to him because if he really does play 30 minutes, he's active enough to where 30 fantasy points is a possibility. I don't love it though. I don't feel great about it. It's, you know, I, I'm sort of selling myself on it, but do I really? You know what? It? You're not you're not supposed to feel great about a 3600 guy. You know what I mean? Like it's it's. it's well, I felt pretty good yesterday with Boban. <laughs> I <laughs> guess. <Stella. laughs> but well, um, yeah. Anyway, let's talk more about this game though, because on the other side of the ball, there are two. I mean, two total. I mean, it seems like standout plays that they're going to get owners too. Maybe they're not kind of as cheap, but. But um, but Marco Fultz and DJ Augustine, I mean, are, are, are again d- c- because of what I want to do, paying up or whatever. Um, I think those are really really strong plays. I presume they're going to get really owned too. No. Um, let's see. I, I no. I, I mean, to me, I think there'll be ownership on them. Yeah, but I think the problem you could make on these slates is by playing the guard value early. We saw it happen yesterday with Dallas. Nobody who won any money played the Dallas value. Right. Um, that was the way you and people were talking it up on the shows today as if they did something right by playing these guys. I knew he, I was like, you put, got a guy who put up 24 fantasy points, 3,700. Yesterday, that was a bad day. Um, right. And you see what happens when the Norman Powell type value opens up later in the day and, and your man Boucher. Whereas, why are we playing these guys in this first game when maybe we really don't need to? And that's what I'm sort of struggling with right now is that, yeah, there's a few guys that stand out value wise. Do I need them? I don't know that these are the guys who are going to make me pay for not having them. And I think there's going to be better value later on. So That's- why don't we do this? Why don't, why don't we go on to, to the next game? You know, if okay. we can just do it this way. So, so Houston, San Antonio, we talked about already that I'm, I'm going to be, you know, I mean, how, what, what kind of, what percent of, of Westbrook are you playing? Like I, I'm having a hard time not playing him right now. Yeah, no, I'm with you. You know what yeah. I mean? Like really- um, so, so let's talk about some of the other pieces here. Um, I, I did, I did struggle um, with one guy on Houston, and I wanted to get your opinion. Um, I, I, you know, I like Covington. I always kind of like Covington. Um, wh- what do you think of um, of Daniel House today? Um, I don't know if he's playing, so I need to find that out. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I'm sort of waiting to hear. That's one of the other pieces of news we need to know about, too, like for, for Houston. Um, yeah, so – I don't know even what that really does entirely for Houston. I think that would be interesting, but I, it's an interesting – we sort of need to see what happens with that one. I, this is part of the problem with these slates these, these times. I mean, it's not fun, but it is fruitful. You know what I mean? It's not fun during the beginning part because there's a lot going on. Um, anyway, I want to – real quick, do you mind if I address a couple things in, that they had in chat? Um, yeah. We had a guy, uh, Ilmatic said, congrats. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Um, also he said he likes the way that we, the way that we talk about strategy rather than projections. Um, thanks for the info from, uh, Mac, Mac, um, Mac on the builds today. What is that? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Since the restart, hopefully you guys can. Yeah. Eric, we'll do a video for MLB later and, uh, Boban and Bobby 2020 for president. Thanks. <laughs> it's like a K9 Bronco. I'm down with that one. Um, sorry about that sheets. What were you, what were we about to go to? Um, no, nothing. I mean, uh, so, so again, this is just these are. I mean, I did a lot of work on the slate, so that's why I just figured I'd just throw the house thing out there because I was kind of struggling what to do. Um, the the I, I wasn't really going to play anybody else. I mean, in the in this game, um, uh, I guess I guess with Derek White out, Dejounte Murray is somewhat interesting. I just don't I just don't think I'm going to get there. You know what I mean? Like you said, with all these other guards, um, I just don't think I'm going to make it. Yeah, I like DeJounte Murray a little bit, and I like DeMar DeRozan as an off-the-board – well, I don't know how off-the-board it's going to be, but I like the DeMar DeRozan in that game. And I like that he's power forward eligible <laughs> because he plays power forward, so it's fair that he's finally actually power forward eligible. Um, what, do, what are you doing with this Philly situation? Um, about the next game? That's, I mean, that's the other thing. We don't have the starting line. I can't answer a question, but we don't, we don't have any – we don't know anything, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's well. It's that's where I'm struggling right now. I can't. I need to know who's playing before I can decide who's the right play. That's that's one of the games that I'm expecting that could end up with potentially far better value than we've seen so far. Well, like for example, Trey um, Burke, like, not Trey Burke. Uh, Alec Burks would be like the guy, the first guy who would stand out to me as someone who could initiate offense and do things um, for them. Because one of the things I was looking for in that game, I mean, again, these are just ideas I've floated around. Is um, 
is if in fact like um, uh, you get what you want and Alec Burks becomes popular. Um, may, again, this is a wild slate with a lot of guys you could go to. Mm-hmm. But I might consider Shake Milton um, in that game. Uh, mm-hmm. he's, he's he's going, you know, he's 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 you know he's kind of a price that you don't want to pay, especially with Alec Burks at forty three hundred, and he just looks to be, you know, he'll have the ball in his hands quite a bit also. So yeah. Yeah. again, Philly, the Philly situation is very strange. I, I will I will throw in one thing. Just remember from last year that for one for one week, Bertan Korkmaz was like the MVP of the NBA. Um, uh, so I don't know if he get a stone play and you know pop ten threes like he's done in the past. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get to him, but you know if you're playing just infinite lineups or yes, maybe maybe you can yeah, use him. I, I don't think we should talk about that. That's the that's the strategy play is don't even think about that game until you get a stone. Okay. In my opinion, because it's coming up. And you don't need to play this first game. You can play full. Okay. You can play TLC. You can play these other guys. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but that's an important decision you have to make. You know what I mean? Like if, if you want to fade that, in my opinion, except you want to fade all the Brooklyn stuff. What's the stuff? We saw this exact same situation in a game they scored 135 points and beat the beat the team with the best record in the NBA. And you want to fade Fultz not and one player. Not one player got there. Not one. And you, oh, no, want to you want to fade Fultz and Augustine and, and, and Vooch also? Augustine is not a fade, really. Like, I mean, there's a good, there's reason to believe that Fultz would get the, the, the usage here. There's absolutely no, no, no motivation for these teams whatsoever. Literally nothing to play for. Would be crazy to expect to me that they play 30 minutes, except for maybe Fultz, who I think they would try and get into that 30-ish minute type of role. So I like Fultz. But I don't trust anything else. And the Nets, look, take a shot with TLC. Take a shot with Kurix if you want to. I don't feel good about it. Um, right. but, what you, but what I'm saying is, is it like how much – but it's a decision you have to make because how much of them you play, you got to get locked in. You know what I mean? Like if, right. if you play too much of them, then then you're scrambling. You pay too little of them. You know what I mean? I don't, so, think, there's any, I don't think there's a danger that you're going to be out of this day with by not playing them. I mean, there's of course, there's always a chance. You know, there's tons of value, right. but there's tons of value everywhere that's going to open up. Like you didn't need Boucher yesterday to win. You could have won with Boucher, but you didn't necessarily need him because the way the lineups were constructed. Right, 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 right. When I mean, playing guys who have literally like, like Kurix, who hasn't gotten there once, and he's been playing the minutes, it feels kind of strange to prioritize him. Although I will have him in one of my decent sized lineups. Yeah, I I think that in 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 the in the lottery tournament, you know what I mean? When, when the 15, whatever that is, if you're going to play a bunch of lineups, I, I do think that, um, that you got to get, you got to get a couple of value guys right today. You know what I mean? And I don't think, and I, for whatever reason, I don't think Corey Joseph is the answer. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't feel like it, does it? Yeah. But you know, he's, 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 he's a temporary answer though. He's the guy you put in right now and then you wait to yeah. see what happens. You know what I mean? Yeah, just I just I just worry that that not having, you know what you're right. I was about to say that that the uh, Jeremiah Martin or somebody like that, somebody from Brooklyn's going to play 35 minutes, but that's not the way they do it. You know yeah, what I mean? Like they, just play, they just play everybody 22. You know, it's like right, exactly. So I'm deciding. Like I actually have Kurix in a lineup that I just put in. I put him in like one of my medium sized big, big lineups, but it makes me frustrated because I I I'm, I'm not sure about between him and Zach Collins, for example. Um, you know what I mean? That's just used to use one other nearly price guy. There's a chance Melly could end up getting a ton of run tonight if somehow Favors ends up getting in that, which is possible because they have a short, you know, th- there's a lot of other guys you can go to later. So that's why I'm just putting these little pieces. I do think the more I think about the Fultz situation, he's a guy who could maybe break it for you. Um, he could put up like a 40 spot, um, which would be nice. But I don't think that's the only way to go. Thanks thanks to Cams, K- by the way, for the congrats. Um, I do love the what they're talking about with Heald and Bogdan. Should we talk about that a little bit? Heald over Bogdan. Um, so they're both in my first, my biggest lineups right now. Matter of fact, I mean, I had one idea of playing all three of them: uh, Joseph and and Bogdan and Heald. <laughs> um, I don't know how that can actually work, <laughs> but um, that was just this is that was just on one build. That I was just kind of working on um yeah I, I don't know if that can work i mean like they, they take each other i mean joseph 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 actually when he does well 
he kind of puts some some ancillary stats up there. He gets some steals, gets some rebounds, gets some assists, and things like that. So it's not like he has to score a right. zillion points to get there. Where I think Heald and and Bogdan, you know, they sometimes fight for each other's shot and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, the what do you think? Is, I'm starting to come more and more on the folds. By the way, I know I keep saying that, but I just want to make yeah. it clear. I don't want to mislead people about what I'm doing. What do you think of? Um, I wasn't getting too much too much of the Celtics game, except I said I was going to be interested in Tatum. Um, uh, and I think for whatever reason, I was going to look at Hayward a little bit. Also, I'm not in any Celtics, I, I don't even expect him to this to be their starting lineup. That for all I know, they'll sit. Okay, there. they'll probably okay. sit at least two, in my opinion. But okay. I just don't see any reason, except for that they haven't been on the court that much together. Or you might see them all play like 20 minutes. The worst thing for them, that game would just be – they would just be a total cross-off if they announced those guys in. So what I think we want to do I – th- I think I like the way this is going because what we'll do is we're going to go to go these games by games, and then we're going to go back and think of what we have to do now. You know what I mean? Because we don't know actually where we're going to end up, but it is c- important to kind of think about where, where we – you know – about where we're headed, you know? So, like, for example, like the Portland-Dallas game, you're getting starters, right, I presume? So so you're getting the, the Portland guys and you're getting the Dallas guys. Um, I, I do think that, you know, that – see, I don't know if I'm getting to Porzingis, um, but maybe I should. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's – I think it's – I think I think it's almost impossible to fade Lillard at this point. Um, and this is the problem. You know what I mean? Like if you if it's impossible to fade Westbrook and it's impossible to fade Lillard, then you're then you're locking both those guys in, and um, I guess there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you could yeah. certainly do that. Um, I mean, yeah, this I lineup, that. for example. <laughs> what did you just say? I mean, this lineup, for example. I mean, it's certainly easy to get them both, but you just can't get like well. Who, I mean, like you don't really need like a Booker or a Luca or whatever. It is. But um, uh. Yeah. But yeah, I think that Luke. I think that um, and here's the problem: like if you, if you try to get Luca, your life becomes very difficult. If you want Westbrook or or Lillard, I think that's the issue. You could get Lillard and Westbrook together, but I don't think you can get Lillard with the other one. I'm uh, Luca with the other one, without being coming really uh, speculative. Yeah. So I just want to announce something that I'm doing. I'm putting TLC into a big lineup in my. Um, I don't like it. In, in my uh, – in drawn DraftKings and Fultz. Um, I just think that the value is too much. If TLC plays the minute, I mean, man, I'm a little worried about it, but I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger on just this one. And I, I think that I'm just going to leave it in this, this big lineup and hopefully uh, it, it allows me to do exactly what I want everywhere else. But the problem is so might other things. I mean – it's it, I, the TLC thing is going to be one that either makes or breaks whatever lineups they're in because I don't think you need him, but I think there's a good enough chance that he gets 30. And I don't have another guy at that exact position that I'm – even if Melly is starting, I don't feel good to say that he's going to get 30. I think he's got a great shot at having being a big upside play, but I don't know. I'm just struggling a little bit with it, man. Um, how much are you playing of lower? Uh, right now I've got him like 75%. Okay. So, and so you're, I, not, you're not playing Luca, pretty much. What's that? So you're not playing Luca. I'm really not finding myself with any Luca. I might change that later on DraftKings. I'm with yeah. you. You know what I mean? I just find I find just find other guys as but sick as it is a better I priority. Know, I, mean, I, I know that they roll out their players, but they don't have anything to play for. Um, you know what I mean? Um, one guy I do want to mention for GPPs that I really like today is uh, where I'm not playing uh, one of Westbrook or Lillard. I like Jaw a lot today. Um, That's really interesting because I had I as, as I had a different way to go in that price range. But go ahead. I think Jaw is the best play because of the motivation and the minutes. And people say how tough the matchup is. This who knows what the matchup's going to be. First of all, um, they're in an absolute must of must 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 wins. You might see forty minutes out of him. Our only issue with him, why he wasn't a higher fantasy point scorer early in the season, was that he wasn't playing the minutes. He's played poorly in the bubble a lot, but he still has such tremendous upside because of, and just the, the no ownership is just, I want I don't want to say it's baffling because I see what everyone's doing, but it is kind of crazy when you think about it because he's going to have this, he'll have the, the usage will be just barely behind Lillard today, probably just behind Lillard and behind Westbrook. But um, yeah, 
<laughs> I, I'm into jump. Yeah, well, yeah, what I was going to do is, um, is uh, again, it's going to depend on lineups and all this stuff, but um, if I'm playing Bogdan and other stuff, I, 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 is, is this the day that they freaking just let Lonzo out there and score 60? Um, I have Lonzo in some lineups, so I hope, I hope so for those lineups, but in general, it's hard to know uh, what they're going to do exactly, but I definitely think he's worth taking a shot on. I don't know that it, He's like a lot because he doesn't like he initiates offense in the half court that much, but I do think that he's a good play. And the other comment in this game is that, again, this could be – look, you know what? I would actually say that this game might actually be a slower-paced game than, than it normally would be because Fox just, just loves to freaking push, and he's out of the game. And, and, and Corey Joseph is not exactly the same type of, you know, rev it up the court type of guy as, as Fox is. Right, right. But, you know – if this thing gets a little bit up and down, I mean, I, I, both of those guards from New Orleans that you that we talked about, like uh, like uh, uh, Alexander Walker or even Frank Jackson, you know what I mean? Like those, I've seen both those guys smash. You know what I mean? Like it, right. it certainly could happen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If if I mean like, this kill Alexander Walker is the guy I'm sort of saving for my later tournament play of the day. You know what I mean? Right. We, don't, we can't do anything with him yet because we don't know what's happening. Um, I also, by the way, like all, I love the Sacramento guys tonight in general. So I, anything you do in that last game, you can always make a cool switch somewhere and do something. Yeah. Happen. So, um, I love Buddy Heald. I love, love, love Buddy Heald as a tournament play. I think the ownership is still not going to flock there. And, uh, obviously I love Bogdan, but you're going to get Buddy Heald at just so much lower ownership. It's pretty exciting. I agree with that. I also think you're playing one of Booker or Aiton in, in most of your lineups. That's your other spend up for me. That's what I'm doing. With Westbrook and my main ones are Westbrook, or Westbrook, uh, what's it, uh, uh, Westbrook Lillard, and one of those guys. But sometimes it'll be Westbrook Jaw and one of those guys. Um, I really like Aiton as a bounce back candidate. I think you're going to get lower ownership on him. I mean, we could say pretty safely that in this spot yesterday, Aiton would have been about sixty or seventy percent owned <laughs> against a non front line of who knows who who. And he's going to be 12% owned, 15% owned maybe. So I love him. Um, love, love, love. So what do, you, what do you think of this last game? I mean, are you, are, you, are you getting any honest or just you don't think so? Uh, not particularly interested, but if I if it looks like he's going to play minutes and then I hear some coach speak, that's what I'll, I'll let determine it. By the way, that did determine my – so I, here's what happened. I want to tell a real quick story about last night, with, and this is what – it also trickles into what, what, why you should do things you do today. Last night I, when I was playing, I, um, I had to decide between LeBron and AD for the last game, and I decided on LeBron in the first place because I started hearing more and more things about how, how frustrated they were and how he felt like he had been irritated by this and that. In those situations when I feel like he's really going to try and put the team on if the other team is going to be competitive and just try and force a win – it's going to be LeBron down the stretch. It's going to be LeBron when it matters. So AD with this massive, massive start, and still had a good game. But I'm getting stuff from people on State Kings, and some other people are like, why would you play LeBron over AD? What's the matter with you? And then LeBron, of course, ends up you know, outscoring him in the end. But it was just a such for – but it was because they had to – that's the guy you have down the stretch. So that's the kind of way you want to look at these. Booker, Lillard, uh, even McCollum, who we didn't talk about. Guys who all can get hot, who are going to have the ball in their hands down the stretch. I know McCollum's on the same team as Lillard. But they're they definitely you know whichever one is hot they will they will let McCollum take over too so I am getting some McCollum shares as well. Um, so I, I, you keep forgetting everybody. This is like a, a eleven hour slate. <laughs> this, I mean, man, this is the I'm telling you this is the, the danger, the tough part, and the value too of playing. Yeah, this. but so again, I not that this could could end the slate, but there's one little note that I just kind of remembered to ask you is. One little bit of kind of semi sneaky injury news is is Shabazz Napier is questionable, right? Right. And you know if he is out, then then Ish and Troy Brown especially become uh, real. Jerome Rob Can I interest you in Jerome Robinson? You don't have to sell me on Jerome Robinson. He's my he's my, he's my pick of those guys today. I told you I got like get like ten texts a night whenever he goes off from my, his BC coach. Here's the problem: you could probably figure out my exact lineups if, if, based on what I'm saying because I have it's very clear. Like, Not really? <laughs> well, you have to think about it. if I say if I'm playing Heald and Bogdanovich, I'm using them in the forward spots because I told you I love the guard spots too much, and you know the guards I'm playing. 
So that means I have to try and find those other guys, which is where the value really stands out for them. Um, but right now, just some ownerships I got on guys. I ended up with like, I ended, I might, I do have like 25% of TLC, um, even though I don't feel great about it. I'm going to actually lower that one in, in one spot right now. And I'm actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to play one other guy from the same game because I, I think that the minutes might be there tonight, but I'm going to take a quick look at my thing. Daniel House's house is now ruled out. Okay, so okay. let's take what is that going to do for us? Um, Nothing. It's going to make us not play Daniel House. That's I think that's. I mean, Covington yeah. becomes a little bit better. And Chioza, Chioza is tempting. Yeah, but it's mm -hmm. also like, so Rivers and Macklemore, obviously, but they already got bumped up. Um, that's going to be an interesting one to see where they go. I'm going to give it a few minutes before I make any statements on that one. I sort of thought that was going to happen, too. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, so, so the, what I was saying is like at 9 p.m., you know, it's a, this is a long slate. So you, you, it's, it's kind of like you have to, at the very beginning, figure out what you want to do in that first game with kind of an idea of what you might have to deal with later, right? Right. But, but you do have to make some kind of decision with this Brooklyn game with how much you want to play of Fultz and how much you want to play of, of TLC or Kirks or, or I, I no, I think I'm, I think I might buy. I think I'm in the in the in the twenty or whatever the cheapest one is. I think I might take some sprinkles with that uh, Jeremiah Martin guy. And mm -hmm. and it goes it goes back to what we what I talked about a little bit yesterday that I want to spend a little more time myself. You know, just putting the players in the right tournaments. You know what I mean? So like a guy like, like that, I'm just I'm never putting in my biggest buy in single entry. You know what I mean? It's just never. It's just not gonna happen. But but. But for a sprinkle, I, I think that I might I might throw a couple of them in, and and I think that everybody's kind of in the same boat, right? That that who wants to commit so much now when the, when stuff can come out later? So if you put a number up in one of these nets guys, especially one of the ones that's low owned somehow, then you can then you can maybe have some fun. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I'll throw in a little bit of Musa and uh, and Chioza. Oh, out of that. My up, my projections updated. Um, I'm just gonna make this quick. Let me see where I have Musa real quick. I've got Musa. But there was another. Wait, there was another guy actually. Hold on. Not Musa. It was um. This is I guess that was the, guy. the problem with these guys, though. I mean, we're running into it right already. You know, like. No, it wasn't Musa. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Where? Well, I mean, you know, you don't know which one's gonna be, but maybe you're right. Maybe it's just. You know, everybody's gonna play twenty-two minutes, and no one's gonna blast. No one's gonna smash. Yeah, and it's just like who are you playing them over? I, I do think that Fultz and yeah, those guys would be the priority. It's just I don't know, man. It's a little. I'm, I'm struggling with it a little bit. Um, so, so going back to some of these some of these issues. So JT's okay. So let's 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 deal with a couple of these. First of all, uh, someone said Javon Carter Phoenix. I, I don't think you need to go there. Um, now some of these questions are really important questions. Someone says best value 30, best 3,300 value guy. I mean, you know, there's a lot of them. I, I didn't even think about getting to Giles, um, Birch. I have, um, I have him as some long shots, depending on, again, what happens later. We just don't know if that's okay. like long, that game is a, a million years away, you know? And, and JT saying best Dicky pivot off of TLC. Bonger, Urson, I'm, I'm not playing you. I don't like guys. you that much. Honestly, I would rather play Gary Clark, but right. I, I, think, I think you – or you try and get up to Melly, um, which I think makes a lot of sense. Um, let me just see something really quick. Uh, uh, um, yeah, Fultz is the one who makes – I just can't get past the Fultz thing making the most sense. But I don't – uh that's scaring me with this um so you don't think Orlando like they have no nothing to play for they don't have any players there's nothing you know I don't know I, I can't see it personally so I should swap out some of this uh, my boot stuff you weren't even gonna play him huh um I'm not playing I don't have boots anywhere yeah. um also, on FanDuel is not until one thirty, so we have some time on that one. I just realized. Uh, so who? Are you, so Ja, I'll stack with J Val. Yeah, you could play definitely play J Val too. Um, well, you I have so Aiden. 
Andre Ayton certainly a better play than Vooch then, right? I think he is. But, I mean, look, Vooch, is magic is incredible. But it's just, I don't know how much he's going to play. I don't know if he'll play the second half. You know what I mean? I don't know if he'll play the fourth quarter. I don't know what's going to happen. I cannot see how on a back to, like, they're just going to run him out. Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Who? Vooch. Oh. I'm sorry, the first of the back to back, excuse me. Um, all right, let me take a quick look at something. So if we're going to call – yeah, I think the TLC thing is is more volatile, but I, I feel weird about it for some reason. I'm just not going to end up doing it, I don't think. I think I'm going to go a different route. It's so hard for me not to want to play Booker here, but there's one thing I'm more – I will say good for them, by the way. What's that? Um, in general, I'm uh, – what's uh, – uh, Phoenix. Yeah. I mean, freaking going maybe uh, maybe undefeated in the bubble. That's right. And it might not even help. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Let me see something real quick. How many minutes? Is... See, if Gary Clark's going to play 28 minutes, maybe he's just the better play. You just, you just pivot over from – What's his name to Clark? He played 33 minutes in the last game. He's not a key part of their rotation, but he's a guy who they can bring off the bench. Like he's Clark might play like Gary Clark may end up playing more minutes than Wait, excuse me. Do we have a starting lineup in Brooklyn? Uh, yeah, we have, well, we do for, yeah, we do. Who are you looking for? Who, what is it? It's Kurix. I'm not looking at it right now. So it's, I'm just looking at the teams, but here, if you just click on the thing, it'll tell you, um, uh, Tyler Johnson, Tioza, Kurix, Cap, uh, TLC, and Anderson. Anderson. Okay. I don't know what's going to happen with this Anderson, with Justin Anderson. I don't know. They haven't played him more than 18 minutes ever. He never really does, even for any team he's played for. So I don't think I would touch that one. God, am I really stuck in this spot where I'm going to end up using this guy? I can't believe I'm going to. Who? TLC. I just can't. It's a weird it's range. A weird too. I really like this build that I've got, and I don't want to mess with it. But uh. all right. Well, so I'm struggling with that. All right, I'm gonna. I have to get out of here soon because I'm having a little trouble editing my lineups because I think it's going a little slow right now. Yeah. So we'll 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 call this then. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and uh, yeah, I think this, hopefully this is very useful for people that yeah. were there. They could, they could go in and, and, and deal with their – let me just look, look at a couple of questions real quick. So you are on Ja, also stock with Jay, with Jay Bell. Would you, would you play both of them, Moran and Joe, and Joe Bell? Yeah, I don't mind it. But I don't think that's necessarily the way I would want to build my lineups. I'd probably have one of them in lineups more. Right. Than, you know, just because there's other guys to spend up on. All right, sounds good. I'm gonna finish this, and um, you know, uh, thanks for coming, and we'll uh, we'll see you guys uh, uh, soon. So what we'll do is 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 Bobby. We'll do baseball in about 15 minutes after this first NBA game goes off. Uh, that sounds great. Okay.